Uh, we will continue with the next presentation, uh, which will also be an online presentation, the bias of policy evaluation for recommender systems, and it will be presented by Shota Yasui. So, uh, welcome, and the floor is yours, Shota Yasui. Okay, um, so this is the presentation for the bias of policy evaluation for a recommendation system. Uh, my name is Shota, and uh, I am the second author of this paper. And this is the joint work with Yusuke Narita and Kohei Yata. Okay, um, here's our main contribution. Uh, we proposed an uh, off-policy evaluation method for high-dimensional setting. Uh, our proposed method is unbiased, asymptotical normal, and convergence rate is square root of n. And we also examined our proposed method in two experiments. Uh, the one is synthetic reinforcement running setting, and the other one is real-world bounded feedback data set. And so let me explain about the background. Uh, we consider the historical data from the Markov decision process. So their environment and policy, then we can observe state from the environment, then policy take action based on the, based on the state. So then as a result, we observe the reward. The general goal of this setting is maximizing the total reward. Uh, we assume the policy will not be updated in each time step. So the environment and policy could be reinforcement running or maybe reinforcement running based recommendation system and also bounded algorithm setting. And in practice, uh, we construct a new policy from the log data to improve the total reward. Uh, however, it is quite risky to implement a new policy on the production environment uh, because the new policy may have lower performance than the existing policy. Uh, so we want to evaluate a new policy before the implementation. And so the problem is how to compare these two policies. And the golden standard of evaluation is A-B testing. Uh, for example, we randomly separate the user into two groups. Then we use the login policy for one group and the new policy for the other group. Then we can compare the average reward. But A-B testing is uh, still unrealistic because we need to implement the policy on the production environment. Also, there are many candidates to evaluate since we can make hundreds of different policies by changing the model selection or hyperparameter setting. That's why the off-policy evaluation, which is called OPE, is getting a lot of attention. So here, let me explain about the OPE and our proposed method. The goal of OPE is estimating the dis uh, discounted value of a new policy. Uh, to estimate the value, uh, we use the uh, available log data, which is a list of trajectory. And each trajectory contains the state and action for each time step. Uh, we express the OP estimator by using a psi, like uh, the equation in the bottom. So for example, uh, we can denote the IP double, uh, which is the most famous OP method, uh, like this. And uh, we denote the importance weight by low, then we can construct the estimator like uh, the second equation on this right. Now I will explain our proposed method. Um, actually, the, our proposed estimator is the doubly robust estimator. And the doubly robust estimator requires the importance weight low, which is low, and the reward function Q uh, before estimate the uh, OP, uh, doubly robust estimator itself. And Actually, the, there is no difference from the uh, usual uh, W robust estimator so far, but the, uh, and the, the only difference from the standard OPE setting is that uh, we are assuming the high dimensional state. So that means uh, uh, S on this equation is uh, high dimensional. So in this case, uh, we want to use a machine learning method to estimate the importance weight low and the rebound function Q. Um, 
but uh, these estimates tend to be biased because of the high dimensionality. So as a result, the OP result using these biased estimator is also be biased. So in a high dimensional setting, we need an OP estimator that is robust to the bias in the estimation of rho and Q. So, uh, so we use the double device machine learning in this program. Uh, double machine learning is a well-known procedure in economics and statistics to avoid this kind of problem. And double machine learning has a, a two features, uh, cross-fitting and name and orthogonality. So the first feature, um, uh, cross-fitting, is about the estimation procedure of double machine learning, and it is quite similar to cross-validation. So firstly, we split data into k-fold, and secondly, we assign one fold as test set and other set as train set. Then construct the estimator of rho and q by using some machine learning method. Then calculate the OP result in the test set by using those estimators. Then we iterate for k times by changing the train and test assignment. And finally, we take the average of the OP result of each fold. So this is the basic um, estimation procedure of the double machine learning. And the second feature is name and orthogonality. And name and orthogonality is the kind of condition for the estimator which is, expe uh, which is expressed um, by the equation on the bottom. So this condition says that the OP estimator should be robust to the bias of the estimator of the logging policy and the reward function. And then you can check the, uh, if our estimator satisfy this condition or not by uh, checking the derivative of, derivative of the, uh, this derivative. And a proposed estimator actually satisfy this condition, but the IPW estimator does not satisfy this condition. So that means the IPW may not be robust in a high dimensional setting. So also, uh, our paper is mainly written for a reinforcement learning setting. Uh, contextual boundary setting is included as a special case in which the length of the trajectory is always one. And so now I will explain about our experiment. And the first experiment is synthetic reinforcement learning case in a cut fall environment. And the reward is the survival time and action is moving left or right. Uh, for state, uh, we used the image around the cart, and also we painted about 10% of randomly chosen pixel in black. And each time step, those pixels moves, moves horizontally. So this modification makes the spurious correlation between the reward and those noisy pixel. So in this experiment, uh, we use the conversion neural network for models to estimate Q and low, and also for the policy too. So this is the flow of experiment. Uh, firstly, we train a uh, exon greedy policy to use a logging policy, uh, to use as a logging policy. And we use a fully greedy version of this policy as the evaluation policy. Next, uh, we run this logging policy to make a log data. Then we run, OPE we run OPE method by using this data. And also to obtain the ground truth result, we run the evaluation policy. Then finally, we compare the ground truth result and OP result, then calculate the MSE. And this is the result table. And we reported the result of direct method, importance weight, and W robust. And actually, there are two types of W robust. And the one is W robust full, uh, which is uh, there is no validation set, so the estimator may suffer from the overfitting. In the half, uh, we, made, we, we made a test set by using half of the data. So the estimator may not suffer from the overfitting, but the sample size, is, sample size used in the OP estimator is half. And the ML is our proposed method, and we use the KCO2, uh, which is the, there are only two fold in this experiment. So we change the value of epsilon, and the higher epsilon means the randomness is high in the logging policy, and which also means the, uh, the distance between the evaluation policy and logging policy is high. 
So the performance of IP double is significantly lower than the other method. And this is because the importance rate is severely large when the trajectory is wrong. So a proposed method has uh, actually the lowest MSE among these methods in this environment. And uh, if we do not implement the uh, uh, noisy pixel uh, on this experiment, and the result, we, result, result is totally different and actually that we, uh, direct method always win, uh, always uh, have the best performance among the other. And the second experiment is the online advertising case. And then we use the data from Cyber Agent, which is one of the largest digital advertisement company in Japan. And they use a bandit algorithm to choose an advertising image. The reward is click and the state, states are the location of, of ad slot, time, and some, use, some basic user information. And we use data from A-B testing that compare the multi arm bandit and contextual bandit algorithm. And this is the flow of the experiment. Uh, they randomly split their user into two groups, then assign uh, a multi arm bandit and contextual bandit accordingly. And they updated their policy every six hours and they continued their test for seven days. So that means that there are 28 batches in this data set. And we evaluate contextual bandit in the uh, multi arm bandit uh, data set by using OPE, then compare with the actual result. Uh, since the data contains uh, four campaigns and the policy was trained for each campaign, uh, we measure the performance in relative RMSC. Um, so this is the result table. And then um, our proposed method has a lower relative RMSC in both cases where we estimate the uh, um, estimated exist, uh, logging policy and uh, also for the case we have the true uh, logging policy. And so actually this is the end of slide and uh, I think there is no, not much time. So I will skip the summarization. Um, so thank you for listening. Thank you for your presentation. Uh, are there any questions in the room or online? I can't see any questions right now, but maybe I can ask one. Uh, so, uh, what's, what would be uh, your next step in this work? Are you planning to continue your work with, uh, like, what are your thoughts about the future work, basically? Um, thank you for the question. Um, actually, the, the one thing I'm, I'm thinking is the, uh, on the, on the real, real world data set, um, we didn't use the uh, image data. And for example, the, we can use the uh, advertising image as the feature, or maybe I should say state or context for um, this kind of the method. So yeah, the use, uh, using the image as a data, then yeah, that, that's the uh, next step for the application, I think. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you very much. Yeah, I don't see any questions, but please keep an eye on the Rexus Hub for uh, future questions. Thank you. Thank you very much.